Buckle up, everyone. You are strapped in and ready for the Insurance Hour with me, your host, Carl Sussman, informing, educating, and entertaining Californians one policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. Hello, hello, and this is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here with me today. We have a full show today, a very big show. So let me give you the information. You are going to call in with your questions right now at 559-656-0317. Or if you want, you can send your questions in to me via email at questions at insurancehour.com. If you need an agent right away, you can just dial pound 250, use the keyword insurance, and that will get you through to somebody right away. We are doing listener calls and emailed questions today. I will take the calls that come in as a priority over the emails. And however, what I'm going to do is just start right out and hit us with some of the emailed questions that we had in. Remember, we're talking about anything insurance related that you have a question on. It might be about your premium. It might be about a cancellation. It might be about a non-renewal. It might be about anything that's going on in the world of insurance that has you perplexed. I will do my best to untangle that and make you less perplexed or hopefully uh, not make things worse for you. So I'm going to start out right now with our first emailed in question, and we'll just hit it right on. Uh, and I'll just read them as they come. I'm not screening these, and I'm not uh, I'm, I'm not trying to soft uh, sugarcoat them. So first question comes in, and it says, I am currently reviewing my home insurance policy and would appreciate a detailed explanation of common terms such as deductible premium and liability. Understanding these terms may help me. Okay. Home insurance policies in general, you should know, these are policies that will cover your property, right? Your your structure, your home. It's going to cover the structure itself. It can also cover your personal property. In addition, it can provide other intangible coverage types, such as liability insurance in the event of negligence on your part, loss of use if you have to move out in the event that there's some type of a loss, medical payments, things of that nature. So, Homeowners insurance policies cover a lot of different things, and they're not all created equal. While there are some standards that insurance carriers will work based on, you can't assume that one policy is going to be the same as the other. So the most important thing to keep in mind is when you're looking at your homeowners insurance policy is be sure you're aware that one policy is not going to be the same as another, even if the few lines that are on that front page you're looking at, that's called the deck page or the declaration page, look the same. One might say it's going to cover your structure for, let's say, 500000 where at the end of the day, one policy might, in the fine print, say it's going to pay 150% of the dwelling, right? That would give you another 250000 Another policy might not. So read your policy and beware of all of the changes between them. Make sure that you ask your insurance carrier. Make sure you ask your insurance agent. There, We, we could do hours and hours just on home insurance. So I, I think the takeaway from this question should just be, Take your time, read the policy, ask questions, and educate yourself. All policies are not created equal. Next question that we have is, it looks like about auto insurance. It says, I'm considering upgrading my auto insurance to a comprehensive plan. Could you provide an average cost estimate for this? Okay, this is interesting because the word comprehensive bugs the heck out of me. Because what does comprehensive actually mean? If you're getting a comprehensive auto insurance policy, does that mean it's going to be everything? It's going to cover everything? Comprehensive is one of those terms that 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 kind of rattles me because I'm never quite sure what people are referring to. What I think is comprehensive and what you think can be different. So understand that to say a comprehensive policy or similar terms that I'll hear now and then are things like, I want full coverage. Well, what's that exactly mean? It could mean different things to different people. As importantly, not only are the coverage that you might be obtaining may vary based on that, the limits of those coverages might be different. So I would always be careful when you're asking for full coverage or you're looking for comprehensive coverage because there is such a vast array of what that means as far as what types of coverage you have and on top of it, the limits within those coverage types. So to answer this email, uh, the short version is no. I really can't give you an estimate for what comprehensive auto insurance would cost without a lot more information having to do with where you are, how old you are, your driving record, the type of vehicle you're driving, and what limits you want for the different types of coverage that you're looking to have. 
but it's a great point. I'm glad that you emailed in. Thank you for that. Next question that came in said, uh, I am exploring different health insurance plans available through my company. Does this make sense to do or should I look on my own? Okay, health insurance is an interesting one because you're, you're, you can look at two types of plans. You can either purchase an individual health insurance plan or you can opt to accept the insurance that your employer has through a group health insurance plan. Now, it used to be, used to be, that, oh, you know what? I'm going to take a break uh, from this question because we've got a caller I want to bring on. Susan, welcome. This is Carl Sussman. You are on Insurance Hour. And how can I help you today? Hey, Carl. I have heard that when I'm traveling and renting a car, I should not accept the rental company's insurance because my plan will cover it. And I haven't really looked into that. I've just always rejected the insurance, com- the rental company's insurance. Is that the right thing to do? Well, it, the, 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 the easy answer is it depends. Some insurance companies, the majority of them, the coverage that you have on your auto insurance policy will transfer to a substitute vehicle. That's the term that they use. However, let's say you have more than one vehicle and you have different limits or different deductibles, let's say, on one vehicle or another. Sometimes it can get a little bit sticky which coverage is going to be, you know, which limits are going to transfer over, which deductibles are transfer over. For the most part, and again, if we're speaking generally, generally speaking, most auto insurance policies, the coverage will transfer to a substitute vehicle while you have it temporarily. That doesn't mean if you're borrowing someone's car indefinitely that your coverage will will stick around forever. But if you're going on vacation or you're going on a trip and you're renting a car, you're more than likely going to be fine not accepting the insurance that the rental car company is offering you. However, I always tell people, you're going to laugh. Now I'm going to step back, step back what I just said. The insurance that they offer is typically pretty cheap. And sometimes it can be a lot easier in the event that you bring the car back and they say, hey, wait, I don't remember that scratch and that spot. And they want you to pay for it. If you've purchased their insurance, you just sort of wash your hands of it and walk away. Whereas if you didn't, you might have be in a position where you have to either start writing them a check, disputing that with them, or filing a claim with your insurance company, which again, you wouldn't want to do unless there's pretty substantial damage in there. So I guess the answer is a little bit yes and a little bit no, uh, depending on your policy. But that's a great question to ask your insurance agent or broker to find out specifically. Very common question and a very important one to know. Gotcha. Super helpful. Thank you. Sure thing. Thanks for the call. Okay, doke. So we, uh, we were talking about health insurance before the call came in. And now we are, uh, we had that call come in. So let me get back to health insurance. Uh, actually, I tell you what I'm going to do. We've got so many calls that are lining up right now. They're starting to back up and, and leave voicemails. Why don't we take a quick break? And when we come back, I'm going to start going over some of those questions that are being left on voicemail because they're, they're again, there's only so many lines coming in on the station. I want to be sure that I get everyone's question. So remember, you can call in now at 559-656-0317. If you're looking to get to an agent right away, just dial pound 250, use the keyword insurance, and then you'll get transferred to an agent right away. I'm Carl Sussman, and this is Insurance Hour, and we will be back in a flash. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in just a few moments, the window to the Magic Podcast Show will begin. My name is Patrick. My name is Calvin. I'm Mouseketeer Greg. My name is Paul, and I will be your guide through the wonderful world of Disney sound experiences. This show is a weekly trip into the world of the Disney theme parks and resorts. And this is the place where you get to use your ears to surround yourself with the magic. For your safety, please remain seated while listening to the windowtothemagic.com podcast. Maybe there's a name for this. Something like Disnotic Obsession. Please visit windowtothemagic.com for more information, or you can find us on Apple Podcasts and in the iHeartMedia app. Hello, hello, and welcome back. I am Carl Sussman, and this is Insurance Hour. Thank you so much for being here. We are taking your questions today. Remember, you can call in at 559-656-0317. 
or you can dial pound 250, use the keyword insurance to get somebody right away. If you've missed any part of the show and you want to get caught up, you want to find out what you've missed, you can get copies of this pretty much everywhere online. You can search YouTube, Daily Motion. We're streaming live also as we speak to Facebook and LinkedIn, YouTube, of course, and all that good stuff. We thank everyone for being here. Remember, we are broadcast to get across California on eight stations, reaching about 30 million listeners. So for the break, as we were getting inundated with calls, which is great, I decided to take a break and take a look at some of the questions that we were receiving in voicemail because we were so busy with calls coming in. So let me read this one to you and then let me address it. It says, hi, I have a question related to the California insurance problem. We have a lot of clients that are having complications buying homes because of the insurance situation. It's pretty well known that there's a crisis and insurance in insurance, I think it means in California. I'm reading the voicemail transcription just so you know. Uh, We seemingly are in a spot where California regulators won't allow insurance companies to charge what's necessary to run a functional insurance operation. So how come nobody's talking about the reality in California? At least it seems that insurance is being treated like a utility, not a business, in my opinion. Crisis. Okay. It's a very long voicemail that I happened to pick. So what they're talking about is, and we're seeing this in California, but not just in California, is we are seeing a situation where the insurance industry is at a standstill. And it has to do primarily with, as this voicemail and this person was was mentioning, we're dealing with some out-of-date regulations that go back 30, 40 some odd years almost. And those regulations did not, uh, obviously, were not prepared to take into account things like climate change and computer modeling and things of that nature. So the regulations are being updated by the California Department of Insurance. There's something called the Sustainable Insurance Strategy. And the sustainable insurance strategy is basically redefining some terms and coming up with some different processes and ways to be able to deal with the fact that this is 2024 and the environment that we're in literally and figuratively and the way that insurance carriers operate and the way that consumers utilize insurance has changed in the last 30 or 40 years. So the regulations need to change with them. We're looking at uh, probably in the next uh, quarter, maybe the last quarter of the year, all of the regulations will be out. And my understanding is that the insurance industry and the marketplace in California should start to see itself opening up a bit as the carriers start re-entering with the new regulations in place. Right now, it's difficult. And this is not just California. I'm, my understanding is that there are restrictions on business and premium issues and underwriting issues throughout the country. We're looking at states like Florida and Texas Oklahoma, Louisiana, Colorado, uh, you name it, Oregon, Washington. These are all states just coming to me that I've read articles recently on that are having significant issues when it comes to what are they doing with their insurance? What are they doing uh, about getting policies that are available and insurance carriers to offer coverage? Right now, again, we're talking about California from this voicemail. And what California is seeing is what the rest of the country is going to or is starting to see in a small part. California is just so big and there are so many people here. Everything seems to happen in California first and then it starts happening everywhere else. So hopefully uh, California will deal with it properly. It seems to me that they are. It would have been nice if it was handled a little faster, but at least they're dealing with it. And then some of those lessons can be learned by the other states as they start to become more acute with these problems. Uh, Also, let me go back now. It It just occurred to me that before the break, I was going back to answer the person's question about health insurance. So I'm going to jump back into that person's question right now. Remember, if you have questions, you can call in right now at 559-656-0317. Of course, you can also send your questions in to questions at insurancehour.com. Or if you want an agent right now, just dial pound 250, use the keyword insurance, and you will get an agent right away. So the question was about health insurance, individual health insurance versus group health insurance. And individual health insurance is something that you have to apply for and qualify for, put a little asterisk there because there's an exception, meaning that you have to go to an insurance company and you have to basically say, here, here I am in all my glory. Here are my health, here's my previous health, here's my current health, and the insurance carrier will decide whether that's a risk that they're able to take and they will give you an option based on the different plans that they have available or not. That's individual health insurance. Group health insurance, on the other hand, which is normally offered through an employer, 
is purchased for the employer's employees. And the main part of that to pay attention to is that you don't necessarily have to qualify to get on the plan. Typically what happens is once you once your waiting period ends and employers decide how long of a waiting period it is, sometimes it's 60 days, 90 days, it could be 120 days, it just depends, then you become eligible to have that health insurance plan. The carrier is not going to ask for all of your health insur- your uh, health history. It's not going to ask. It's not going to qualify you. It's simply going to give you the opportunity to get on that plan or not. Price-wise, individual plans tend to be more expensive than group plans, which makes some sense when you think about it. If you're an insurance carrier and you're getting premium from one person here and there versus groups that are putting in tens of thousands of people, you have the ability to pool that money and have the rates be lower. So group health plans do tend to be less expensive than individual plans, and they do have the ability to not offer, to not have to underwrite you, meaning asking about your health. Now, I told you there was one caveat to buying individual health insurance and being asked health questions, and there is something called the Affordable Care Act that is in place. If you are in need of health insurance, then there are enrollment periods when you can go to the Uh, Affordable Care Act providers and obtain an insurance policy, sometimes even subsidized price-wise, depending on your situation. There are some other terms to be aware of for that, for the Affordable Care Act, things like a qualifying event. For example, if you're on a group plan and you become fired, you can go to the Affordable Care Act and see about getting coverage from them right away. Otherwise, there are open enrollment periods when you can go to the Affordable Care Act providers, you can apply, And you will get a policy option. You will get many options, actually. And you do not have to provide your health history or qualify specifically for a plan. Okay? So that was, uh, I think that was a question that I had to answer in three or four parts because I kept getting other calls coming in. So I apologize to whomever called that uh, question, or sorry, emailed that question in. Next thing that we have on email is about, looks like long-term care because they put LT insurance. I assume that's what they mean. It says, I am considering purchasing long-term care insurance and would like to know more about what it typically covers. Does it include both in-home care and care in specialized facilities? Also, how do the costs vary on each coverage level? Wow, I'm getting pummeled with give me prices on these on these types of emails. And as you can probably imagine, that's a bit challenging. Let's tackle this one as soon as we take a break. Again, I'm Carl Sussman, and this is Insurance Hour, and we will be back in a flash to tackle that question. In today's uncertain times, navigating the California insurance marketplace can feel like a journey through uncharted waters. That's where Sussman Insurance Agency steps in, guiding you with the wisdom of experience and the care of family. We at Sussman Insurance Agency understand the complexities of finding the right coverage in these challenging times. With decades of expertise and a heritage spanning two generations, we're more than just insurance agents. We are your trusted advisors, your navigators in the sea of insurance options. Treating our clients like family isn't just a phrase, it's our commitment. We listen, we understand, and we provide solutions tailored to your unique needs. Why? Because to us, you're a part of the Sussman family. Family. Don't let the tides of uncertainty sway you. Anchor your trust in Sussman Insurance Agency. Call us today at 877-411-5200 or visit sussmaninsurance.com. Have specific questions? Drop us an email at sales at sussmaninsurance.com. At Sussman Insurance Agency, we're not just in the business of policies. We're in the business of peace of mind. Sussman Insurance Agency, navigating your insurance life together. Hello, hello. Welcome back. This is Carl and this is Insurance Hour. Thanks so much for being here with us. Before the break, we were about to tackle long-term care insurance, the question that was emailed in. Remember, you can also ask your questions right now. You can call in at 559-656-0317. You can call in anytime, as a matter of fact, even if we do not happen to be live. And we will have a voicemail set up that you can leave your questions on and we will answer those questions on a later show, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. If you do need to talk to an agent this very moment, right away, you can just dial pound 250 on your phone, use the keyword insurance, and you should be transferred over to talk to an agent right away. If you have questions and we have not answered them or you missed part of the show and you want to get caught up, remember you can go online, you can find us on YouTube and you can get a copy of the show that's there. All of our previous shows are there as well. You can go through and search and find out what information uh, you might have missed that you might be looking for. Again, we keep a pretty large library of the shows there, so you do have the ability to go in and get them whenever you like. Before the break, 
we had a question about long-term care insurance, what it covers and what it costs. So let me give you just a brief synopsis about long-term care insurance, because long-term care insurance is, again, uh, this, this could be multiple shows in and of itself. Long-term care insurance is going to help reimburse you for costs in the event that you need to have long-term care, okay? Now, it's usually broken down into two parts, home health care and in a facility health care. Sometimes you can purchase a policy that will cover both. Sometimes you can purchase a policy that's going to cover just in a facility. Now, as you can imagine, most people would like to be able to stay at home and have care. And of course, the prices reflect that. The interesting thing about long-term care insurance is it is one of the few insurance policies that has an unbelievably high retention rate. What does that mean? That means that when people purchase it, they keep it. I'll give you an example. With life insurance, the average policy that's purchased stays about seven years. For whatever reason, that's the average. So people buy life insurance and on average, it cancels after seven years. Either they stop paying it, whatever might happen, happens. Now, long-term care insurance, the retention on those policies can literally be somewhere in the high 90%. I mean, it's unbelievable. And that's because people understand when they're purchasing it, they want to have that coverage in the event something happens. So because the policies stay in force for so long and because they stay in place, the carriers know when they're selling these policies that the likelihood that they will be paying a claim is extremely high. It's not a matter of, is there potentially going to be a long-term care claim put in? It's when will it be put in? And because of that, it tends to be fairly expensive insurance to obtain. It's unfortunate because I think it's one of the most undersold types of policies that are out there. But unfortunately, because of the cost and because of the length of time you have to purchase the policy and have it to make it affordable, uh, those two things make it a little bit more challenging. Remember, if you're purchasing it younger, similar to life insurance, you're going to be getting a rate based on what your age is when you obtain the policy versus if you purchase it later in life, you're going to be paying a higher premium, potentially for a shorter period of time. It's complicated. I would say if you're talking about long-term care insurance, you're thinking about it, you want to get information, this is probably not going to give you enough information to even scratch the surface. I would look for a specific long-term care insurance expert and speak to them about your questions and speak to them about your concerns because it's very, very important that you get the information that you need to be able to address the, your what it is your expectations are. Most importantly, understand that most long-term care insurance policies are what are called indemnity policies. That means that they're going to reimburse you, meaning you have to lay the money out first. So keep that in mind as well. So long-term care insurance, again, I want you to check with a, with a professional on that. And the first thing you want to ask them is, how long have you been selling policies and how many policies do you sell in a given month? Because the industry for long-term care insurance is so fluid and changes so frequently that if you don't have someone that is going to be really on top of things, they might not deliberately, they just might not have the most updated information to be able to give you the best possible option of what you need. Make sense? Okay, let's move on to the next question. Remember, you can call in with your questions right now at 559-656-0317. Happy to take those calls whenever you have them. Remember, if the lines are busy, try again. You can just bug the heck out of the switchboard. If you do get voicemail, leave your question there, or you can try calling back, whatever you fancy, and I will go ahead and get those answers for you as quick as I can. What we're going through right now are emails that have come in with questions as well. Um, remember, you can send your questions in to questions at insurancehour.com. This question says, are there specific conditions or safety features in a home that would make me eligible for a premium discount on my home insurance? I'm interested in making some upgrades and would like to know what to do to save money on my home insurance cost. Wow, that's a great question. The answer is an overwhelming yes. There are definitely things that you can do that will lower your insurance cost and things that you would assume might save money are going to be the first ones. Look to get a burglar alarm system, right? Because that's going to help with your potential for having a break-in. Make sure that you have, if you have the ability to add sprinklers to your home, now I'm not talking about the front lawn, sprinklers in the house. If you're doing a major remodel, depending on the state you live in, that might be to code anyway, you have to do that. Look to do that. There are significant savings on your home insurance for that. Make sure you have deadbolt locks on the front door. 
You might not even know what kind of a lock you have, but there is a very specific type of uh, of a lock. It's called a deadbolt lock, maybe even two. These are things you can do to lower your insurance premium. In states like California, where they're enacting new regulations to try and address this specific issue, the California Department of Insurance, as a matter of fact, has on the books as we speak, laws that say that the insurance industry has to provide fairly significant discounts for doing things to make their home less likely to burn, for example. They have two categories. Usually it's things you can do to your house and things you can do around your house to make it less likely to burn. And that's something I think we're going to see a lot more, especially in California, since again, they're the first ones to be coming out with these types of discounts. We're going to see consumers having the ability to do more things that will impact the premium they're paying. In the past, it was a little more homogenous. There were some standard discounts and that was it. But I think we're going to start seeing as an industry countrywide, a much more granular underwriting process where you might be paying one premium and your next door neighbor might be paying a significantly different premium because you're doing things that the insurance carrier says will make your house safer, will make it less likely to burn, less likely to be broken into, whatever the case might be. So pay attention, check with your insurance company, check with your insurance agent and find out what discounts are available. When you're going to do a remodel or you're going to be doing work on your house, you might as well find out what things you might be able to do that will also reduce your premium. That's super important. And it's a great question. Thank you so much for sending that in. We're going to take one more quick break and then we will come back for the next half of the show. I thank you for being here. I am Carl Sussman. This is Insurance Hour and we will be right back. I'm sure many small business owners out there have been hearing a lot about tax advisory, but aren't quite sure what it is or how it can help. Let Semaphore guide you and help fulfill your tax advisory needs at SemaphoreHQ.com. A tax advisor is a part-time, on-demand financial expert who can help you with scaling and tracking your financials and making smart financial decisions. How do you know if you need tax advisory? The answer depends on your stage, size, and goals. Tax advisory can help you address these issues without the cost or commitment of hiring a full-time CFO. A tax advisor can work with you on a project basis, a retainer basis, or a hybrid basis, depending on your needs and budget. If you are interested in learning more about how tax advisory can help you scale your business, please contact Semaphore today at 720-766-8869 or check us out at semaphorehq.com. That's S-E-M-A-P-H-O-R-E-H-Q.com. Hello, hello. This is Carl Sussman. Welcome back to Insurance Hour. Thank you so much for being here. If you have missed any part of the show, don't forget, jump online, search for Insurance Hour. You'll find multiple places to get copies of this show and previous shows. Lots of great insurance related information there. We are taking insurance related questions. Today, we are going through listener emails as well as call ins. You can call in right now at 559 656 0317. If you want to talk to an agent right away, you can dial pound 250, use the keyword insurance, and you'll get through to an agent right away. Thank you so much for being here. We are broadcasting live across the state of California. We are now syndicated to over eight, I think eight stations and over 30 million listeners. So again, I thank you for your, uh, your eagerness to learn and try and educate yourself on all things insurance. This is not your grandpa's insurance policy anymore, guys. I got to tell you. Things are genuinely different. And the, the ability to just have a policy or go shop for a policy and have it and figure they're all going to be pretty much the same, those days are really behind us. Educating yourself on insurance policies, how they work, discounts that are available, when to shop, when not to shop, where to shop, how to shop, what to ask. These things are going to become more and more important as time goes by now, because what we're starting to see is a situation where you being proactive in these things is going to have a much more significant impact on the premium you're paying versus in the past, it may have had a smaller impact. So again, I thank you for being here and helping educate yourself so you can hopefully save some money and have a better understanding of how the process works. All right, back to listener emails. This one, uh, I am extremely disappointed to see my home insurance premium has significantly increased without any prior warning or clear explanation. This sudden change is quite upsetting and I demand to know why. Do you know why? Excuse me. Uh, This is a tough one. 
And you know, I, I want to address a few things here. I understand, and it's very frustrating in being a consumer dealing with the fact that when we don't file claims and we haven't moved our house, we haven't done anything, all of a sudden we will see a premium increase. And we want to know, well, why? We didn't do anything. Why did our price go up? Typically speaking, with the way insurance policies work, you're in a position where you're going to have the insurance carrier that has to file and request changes, and that includes price changes, guidelines, all sorts of policy changes to their state's Department of Insurance. So they're not making these changes in a vacuum, right? They're not waking up one day and saying, I think I'm going to charge this guy more money. They can't do that. They have to do it on a much larger scale. So what we're seeing across the board, and I don't think there's a single state in the country that is not seeing significant premium increases on their property insurance. And this is due to a multitude of factors, everything from unbelievably high inflation to higher costs to rebuild to higher labor costs. That's just for starters. We're also seeing claims coming in in a different way than we used to. Claims used to be coming in when there was a significant loss, something significant dollar-wise, and the propensity to file a claim tends to be changing. So more people are filing claims than they used to. So we were in a position where the companies are responding to that. We have a caller that's just come in. We'll bring him on. Um, Mike, you are on with me. I'm Carl Sussman, host of Insurance Hour, and how can I help you? Hey, Carl. How are you doing today? Terrific. Um, yeah, so like many homeowners, just really struggling with getting my property covered. It's kind of in a higher wildfire area, and I've ended up in the California Fair Plan, and my agent has come back to me and, and talked about a, a wrap policy and mm-hmm. um, just trying to fully understand what that is and you know the benefits of that, uh, I guess, in addition to the Fair Plan. Sure. And your thoughts on that. Sure. Right. Well, again, we've talked about the marketplace in California as being very tight right now and very difficult as the, the vast majority of carriers are not offering coverage. And we're seeing this in other states as well. The California Fair Plan is offering you basic fire insurance only. And if your home is in, a, in an area that's you know relatively high or above average for fire risk, then you're probably in the right place for that for the fire insurance portion. Now, the second part of what you said is a wraparound policy. Now, this is where it gets complicated because terminology matters in insurance. A wraparound policy is not a DIC policy. And a DIC policy, nine out of 10 times, is actually what what insurance carriers are offering right now. So the first thing you want to do is find out from the agent that you're talking to, is this an actual wraparound policy or is this a DIC policy? They cover almost the same thing. However, a wraparound policy will actually pay excess fire insurance once the fair plan policy is exhausted, where a DIC policy will not. So as you can imagine, that's a major difference you need to pay attention to. So that would be my first thought would be find out, are we talking about an actual wraparound policy or are you talking about a DIC policy and, and, and understanding the difference between the two? Now, it's a little bit difficult to get DIC policies, at, forget a wraparound policy, but you, it's very difficult to get those policies right now because again, the market in California is extremely tight. So I would say if you're able to get one and it's with a reputable company, you've checked the financial solvency and you're comfortable, then you've probably got it about as well as you can. You'll have the fire insurance from the fair plan. Um, be sure that that policy was written correctly. If you had a broker do it, make sure they in, you know included some of the basic features, vandalism, um, smoke damage, things like that. There are some some parts of the fair plan policy, and I'm, I'm blanking on it sitting here right now, that are not automatically included. You want to be sure you have them. They're not expensive. But if you don't check those boxes, you won't have that coverage. So I would say, based on what you're telling me, if, you're, if your home is in one of those areas, yes, the fair plan is probably where you need to be. And it's going to be more expensive than it used to be, unfortunately. And I would find out for sure, do, is it a wraparound policy that you have or a DIC policy? Because you need to know because that will impact what you're willing to pay and if you're still looking to shop around for other coverage or not. Got it. That makes a lot of sense, Carl. Thank you. I appreciate it. You got it. Thanks for calling. Yeah, you know, terminology matters with insurance, I can tell you. And and I, I run into this all the time where people think they have something because they've heard it before. And I have to remind myself, 
well, I do this all day long, every day. So of course it's familiar to me and I know what the difference is, but the average person absolutely does not. So this is a big one for anyone that's purchasing fire insurance through the California Fair Plan and they're getting what's called, air quotes, that supplemental policy that should be purchased. Be sure you find out, is it a wraparound or is it a DIC policy? Because it is different. And the example that I gave about excess fire may or may not apply to the wraparound as well. There's no boilerplate way that these policies are written. So you really need to be careful, really be sure you know what it is that you have. I do suggest that wherever you purchase the California Fair Plan, I assume you're purchasing through, through an independent agent, it's always better to do that, then you're going to want to hopefully have that same agent write the DIC policy for you. You want everything to be under the same roof. Trust me, in the long run and the short run, that is the best way to go. Another quick break, and we will be back to get with listener questions. Yak in a flash. We all love children, and many of us have an old car, truck, or van in the driveway. Find the Children has a great way for you to put your unwanted vehicle to good use. Keep listening. Every year, thousands of kids go missing. Trust me, it's a parent's worst nightmare. When a child goes missing, every moment counts, and you need all of the help you can get. Find the Children is a nonprofit organization dedicated to locating missing children and bringing them home safely. You can help support their mission by donating your car, truck, van, or SUV. A towing company will come and pick up your car for free, running or not, and the donation of your car is tax deductible. Your help is providing the funds they need to continue their services. Call now, donate your old vehicle to find the children and get free pickup. Here's the number. 800-403-6517. 800-403-6517. 800-403-6517. That's 800-403-6517. Master the California Insurance Marketplace with Sussman Insurance Agency. Two generations of insight make us your ideal ally. Call 877-411-5200 or visit sussmaninsurance.com for information on your insurance policies now. Hello, hello, and welcome back. I am Carl Sussman, and this is Insurance Hour. Thank you so much for being here. We are live taking your questions right now at 559-656-0317. You can also send your questions in to questions at insurancehour.com. If you need an agent right away, just dial pound 250, use the keyword insurance, and you should be connected to an insurance agent right away. If you've missed part of the show, we've been going through a lot of questions from people calling in and sending questions in. Jump online. You can find us. You can get a copy of the show. It's on YouTube. It's on several other platforms, and you'll be able to see it. We try and keep all of the shows available so you can use it sort of as a a library of knowledge for yourself. Things are changing. The insurance industry is changing and you really do need to spend some time educating yourself so you can better understand what's happening, why it's happening. And most importantly, be sure that you know what it is you're having, you know what it is you're paying for and know what you can do to potentially pay less if you do want to try and find a way to be in a more competitive marketplace. Before the break, we were going through some questions and we're going to jump right back into the next one. This one is about auto insurance, it looks like. And it reads, I am shocked to see my auto insurance spike this renewal period with absolutely no justification provided. This is outrageous and okay, I'll spare you the profanity. Yes, uh, we talk about property insurance and the rates going up, but we're seeing this with auto insurance rates with the same level of frequency. Why? right? I'm not having a ticket. I'm not having an accident. You could ostensibly say that I'm getting older, so I've had more experience driving. Why is the rate going up and not down? My car is even getting older, so it should cost less. So a lot of factors here. We need to understand that auto insurance literally is a reflection of the claims that are coming in and the claims that are being paid. The carriers can only charge rates that they can justify to the state's Department of Insurance. So if you're seeing a rate increase on your auto insurance, it would be nice if your agent or broker would reach out and have a conversation with you. If it's significant, you should definitely reach out to them if they are not reaching out to you to try and get more clarification. But there's a reason that this is happening. Some of these reasons have to do with the actual claims costs that are coming in. These claim costs are having to do with the frequency of accidents that are happening on the road. I'm going to say it. I know you're going to shake your head because you've been hearing about it forever. 
texting while driving and distracted driving is a real, real problem right now. People, I mean, how many times are you driving down the road and you look at the guy next to you or the girl and they're like this, they're looking down and they're literally looking down. And when you realize that in the time it takes you to just look down, read something, maybe even type okay and hit enter, depending on if you're on the uh, road or on the freeway, you may have traveled the distance of one or two football fields in the time that it took you, you to look down, look at that, answer, and go back. Imagine your car is not being controlled by anyone for a distance of one or two football fields. It's huge, and it's scary. And unfortunately, it's causing a lot of accidents. Keep in mind also that vehicles now are getting bigger, heavier. Electric vehicles are also costing a lot more to replace than cars did previously. For example, if we're looking at a vehicle and you get into a small accident, you, you, you know, maybe you rear end someone, not a lot of damage, but that not a lot of damage, air quotes again, is on the bumper. Now, the bumper used to just be a bumper and they'd smack a new one on. Well, now that bumper has a camera, it has LIDAR, it has radar, it has uh, all sorts of sensors that are on it. It has to be properly installed and balanced by a licensed specialist. So that what used to be a very simple, inexpensive claim to handle and pay for now is thousands of dollars. And that's being reflected in premium payouts. In addition, injury in accident, those dollars that are being paid out are significantly going up in ways that I'll give you an example. You're not going to believe this, but it's 100% true. In the past, again, when people would get into a car accident, if it wasn't anything serious, they might have required a little bit of physical therapy. Maybe they would go for acupuncture or a chiropractor. Not, it, you know, again, I'm talking about a minor accident, but they're hurt and they're going and they're getting treatment. There's a new trend that's been happening where people that are in car accidents, they're going to the doctor and the doctors are giving them epidurals for pain blocking. Now, as you can probably guess, getting an epidural pain blocker is significantly more expensive than going to the chiropractor or going to the physical therapist's office, even for multiple visits. So what we're seeing is because there is this increase in what the carriers are paying out for claims, they're paying out more frequently because of things like distracted driving. They're paying out more for physical damage to the vehicle because of things like electric vehicles and all vehicles that have backup cameras and all of those things all over the car. And they're paying out more for injuries in the vehicle to people that are in the vehicle because they're getting more highly specific and more expensive care than previously was happening. So all of these things, you put this together and what does that turn into? It turns into more claims being paid and higher amounts being paid for those claims. Yes, we're unfortunately going to be paying for that in the end of the game because the carriers are going to take those increases of what they're paying out and they're going to very nicely pass that right back down to us that's how it works insurance carriers have to make a profit if they're paying out more in claims they're going to have to charge more money to offset that that's just the name of the game that's how insurance works so unfortunately we are seeing significant increases in auto insurance premiums and i don't suspect that's going to change anytime soon forget the whole concept of autonomous driving and driver assisted um, issues there are different legislations that I am aware of that are going on right now. If you're old enough to remember, there was a time when there were only two brake lights on your car. And then the third brake light that we now see at the bottom of the rear windshield didn't exist. Well, they found out that by putting something right in your field of view, that was preventing people from getting rear-ended. Now, in that same vein, there's technology now that's looking like it might actually come out as being required by automobile manufacturers and that is in the auto braking feature technology. Auto braking is a feature that, again, we're talking about expensive technology. There are sensors in the front of the vehicle that sense if you are quickly approaching a vehicle in front of you. And if you do not stop, it will stop. Now, I've experienced this once before, and I was actually in a parking garage. So it wasn't that I was going fast and didn't see the car, but I was maneuvering a rental car in a parking garage, and I got very close to an area that, uh, not the wall, but the little arm actually that goes up and down and it slammed on the brakes. And I went, whoa, that felt sort of strange. The car all of a sudden just stopped on me. But that type of technology will prevent people from getting rear-ended because the car basically will prevent you or try its best to prevent you from hitting the car in front of you. So the technology is costing more money, but we haven't yet gotten to the point where it's mandatory 
and widespread enough to actually lower the frequency of accidents to offset the cost for the people that have it on their vehicle. And like I said, that like, that regulation, those those guidelines seem like they're starting to pick up some traction. So hopefully we'll see that happening because if we have the technology, if everyone had that technology in their vehicles, then the likelihood is we would see less people getting rear-ended, less accidents, less claims, less claims, lower premium. Let's talk about it a little bit more right after the break. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in just a few moments, the window to the Magic Podcast Show will begin. My name is Patrick. My name is Calvin. I'm Mouseketeer Greg. My name is Paul, and I will be your guide through the wonderful world of Disney sound experiences. This show is a weekly trip into the world of the Disney theme parks and resorts. And this is the place where you get to use your ears to surround yourself with the magic. For your safety, please remain seated while listening to the windowtothemagic.com podcast. Maybe there's a name for this. Something like Disnotic Obsession. Please visit windowtothemagic.com for more information, or you can find us on Apple Podcasts and in the iHeartMedia app. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Insurance Hour. I'm Carl Sussman, your host. Thank you so much for being here. Wow, we have gone over a bunch of stuff today. People have been calling in and sending emails in with their questions. Remember, you can call in as well, 559-656-0317, or send your questions in to questions at insurancehour.com. If you want an agent right now, just dial pound 250, use the keyword insurance, and you should get through to an agent right away. Just transfer your right over. Now, we've been talking about the reasons for insurance prices going up, and that's never a pleasant conversation to have. If you want to hear more of it, though, just go back online, search for Insurance Hour, and you'll be able to find this show that we went through if you've missed part of it and previous shows as well. We keep everything there so you can go back and use it as a reference when you need it. So we were talking about auto insurance premium and how auto insurance premiums have been increasing. I'm going to try and get to another question uh, so I'm skipping through some of the emails because a lot of them do have to do with insurance premiums increasing. And I, I wish that there was an easier way to, to, to put this. I wish I could say, oh, well, this is why, and this is how you solve it. The problem is if we stop right now and think about it, what is not more expensive right now? Have you looked at the price to go to the movies? Have you looked at the price of food? Have you looked at the price of gas? Have you looked at the price of basically everything? When you go to a restaurant, everything is more expensive. And when we see those levels of cost go up so quickly, it's jarring. It's really jarring. It is for me. I know that when I go to the movie, I went to the movies the other day, and I think between the ticket and the small popcorn, it was like $34. I mean, my mind was blown. And that, and again, I'm not that old. It's not like I can say, well, you know, back in this day, you know, it was, you used to go to the movie for a dollar. It's not like that. This is some, these are changes that we've seen in the last few years only at an in, unbelievably accelerated rate. That's what it, that these high levels of inflation have done. They've made everything significantly more expensive. Remember, whether it's your home insurance or your car insurance, those higher levels of cost translate into the insurance carriers having to pay more for all of those things, right? They're paying for the more expensive hotel room. They're paying for the more expensive parts for your car. They're paying for the more expensive labor and parts and items that you need for your home in the event of a loss. They're the ones that are paying those crazy high amounts that we're seeing. So I can't imagine why I, we wouldn't see that come back to haunt us as well, because if they're paying more, we have to pay more. That's just the way it works. There's our money going in as premium, and that premium is used to pay claims. If claims costs gets higher, then premium costs get higher as well. Now, we're also seeing a situation where there's a lack of insurance competition in a lot of states because of some regulation issues and because of really just a, little, a lot of confusion and readjusting to how this, this climate situation is affecting things. Every time I check my news, I'm seeing, okay, now we have softball size hail in Florida, in Florida, or in Texas, or we have a major storm, or we have another massive weather event that's in Oklahoma. We're seeing weather events happening all the time, all over the place, whether it be a wind claim or a fire claim or a hail claim. 
we're seeing this with such frequency that there's no question that the insurance industry has to respond and find a way to be able to maintain solvency. Let's remember, it doesn't do us any good if the carrier is charging us a premium that's not sufficient enough for them to be able to pay the claim when the claims come, right? They have to have enough. And believe me, from everything that I read, and I talk to everyone from state legislators to insurance executives to um, you name it, state's Department of Insurance, and this is such a heavily regulated industry. And I know it doesn't feel good and it's aggravating to hear, but there is really nothing that can be done to simply lower the costs again. The way we used to pay for insurance, the prices that we might have been used to paying, that's just not going to be the case anymore because everything is more expensive including our insurance. Everything sort of goes together, right? Even a catastrophe that happens in another country, that trickles down to us, believe it or not, through what's called reinsurance. We talked about reinsurance on another show. You can go back and check it out. But the, the short version is reinsurance is what an insurance carrier will purchase in the background to help spread the risk that they're taking by taking on your risk. And they pay a premium for that, just like we pay a premium for insurance. Insurance carriers pay a premium for reinsurance. So those costs have gone up. And when those costs go up, guess what? That will impact what our insurance carrier's costs are. And you got it. That's going to trickle down to the premium that we're paying as well. So everything that's happening globally really does impact what we're all paying for our insurance premium. And I don't mean to preach because it's really frustrating. I do this for a living. I talk to clients every single day I have for over 30 years. It's very frustrating when all of a sudden we're seeing premiums that go up 15%, 20%, or one carrier leaves the state and the only option currently might be 10 times the premium. It's outrageous and I totally get it. I also understand why it's happening. It makes it a little bit easier for me, no less frustrating, but a little easier because I can understand it. And I'm trying to impart that knowledge to you so you can understand it. You can be just as pissed off and frustrated as I am because believe me, I am. You deal with just your policy and your premium going up. I deal with thousands of clients' prices and policies going up. So believe me, I feel it. And it's frustrating and aggravating as can be. Just keep in mind that this is not happening in a vacuum. Everything that's happening is happening as a result of many things going on in the background, a result of claims a result of how many claims are being put in, what the claims are costing, you name it, it's happening. We're going to be out of time in a few seconds. I wanted to thank you all for being here. Remember, keep calling in with your questions. Call 559-656-0317. You can also dial pound 250 anytime and use the keyword insurance and you'll get an insurance agent. Go back on YouTube or wherever you watch your videos or get a podcast. You can get our previous shows, get more information, Get educated. I promise you, it is worth your time. It is worth your time investment to learn a little bit more about insurance so that you can make better decisions, have a better understanding, and know what it is you're doing. Because again, this is not your grandpa's insurance policy. I think I'm going to get that on a t-shirt. Things are different. You need to know more. You need to pay more attention. I'm Carl Sussman, and you have been watching Insurance Hour. Thank you so much, and we'll talk again soon. I do want to thank all of you for taking the time to listen today. I know insurance is not necessarily the most sexy concept. It's not the most exciting thing in the world. It is important that you understand what it is you're getting, what you should be looking for, red flags, you name it. You just need to know more than you used to. Things are more complicated than they used to be. If you have any questions, please reach out to me directly. You can email your questions to questions at insurancehour.com or call and leave a voicemail at 559-656-0317. Educating and entertaining Californians, one insurance policy at a time, this is Insurance Hour. This show is dedicated to Shamrock Papa.